Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. Comic book adaptations are nothing new to film these days. While the overwhelming success of the MCU first comes to mind, even smaller series with cult followings such as Polar, The Boys, and The Old Guard have recently been more or less successfully adapted to the big screen. And yet there are few horror comic series that have been given the same love and support by studios. But just how exactly would someone adapt a slasher comic series to film? The fact is, people expect more out of their slashers these days. Given how oversaturated the genre can feel, offering more than a billowing body count can be the edge a slasher needs to stray from the crowd. Random acts of violence attempts to find a balance between unique storytelling and savage kills, though often struggles to maintain that delicate balance. Directed and co-written by Jay Baruchel, Random Acts of Violence is an adaptation of Justin Gray and Jimmy Palmiotti's 2010 graphic novel. The film follows comic book writer Todd Walkley, played by Jesse Williams, as he struggles to craft a fitting ending for his slasher horror series, Slasher Man. It's a pretty original title. Pages upon pages filled with disturbing and horrifying bodily dismemberment for his reader's amusement. Todd's imagination can't take all the credit, though, as his controversial comic draws inspiration from a real-life serial killer. But when he sets out on the road with his girlfriend Kathy, business partner Ezra, and his assistant Aurora, horrific deaths recreated from his comic begin to follow in their wake. This is Barichel's second directing and collaborating with co-writer Jesse Chabot, their previous film Goon, The Last Enforcer, being obviously more in line with their comedic sensibilities. This initially had me wary of random acts of violence as this could very easily fall into the overbearing, try-hard humor horror camp. But fortunately, I was pleasantly surprised to find that the duo largely, while not entirely, abandoned those sensibilities. Rather, they heavily lean into their adaptation's savage slasher brutality in grotesquely memorable fashion. Random Acts of Violence truly shines in its mean-spirited and compassionless violence. It not only features several shockingly gruesome kills, but you can't not respect Baruchel's wherewithal and willingness to go all in on the film's slasher persona. The sudden savageness of kills continually catches the viewer off guard with just how unapologetic acts of violence are within the film. Kills are fast, rage-filled assaults on decency in their execution, as well as what is constructed with the victim's corpses. The figure that is recreating Todd's kills from his book is only referred to as the Welder, given he dons a welder's mask during his nocturnal hunts. There is a manic energy to his character that speaks to his deteriorating mental state as he psychs himself up before kills by beating his chest or giving himself sickening words of encouragement. In an early scene, we see he stages a teen's car to break down along the highway by slashing their tires the night before they leave a motel. He catches them during a rainstorm and pulls up behind them, imitating a good Samaritan offering roadside assistance. Though as these teens begin to realize he's unstable and barricade themselves in their vehicle, he begins pacing, banging on the hood of his own vehicle, punching himself in the chest, psyching himself up to do what he believes he must, and then he strikes. It's an incredibly disturbing scene that features unrelenting bodily carnage that again, you have to respect the film's dedication for really honing in on what gorehounds want out of their slashers. There are also several scenes where the killer constructs totems or dioramas with his victim's corpses, inspired straight from the pages of Todd's comic. These fantastical arts and crafts nightmares are immediately reminiscent of Brian Fuller's Hannibal series, as these contorted lumps of flesh are a memorable display of evil. I wish that there had been a few more instances of this, as they complemented the film's overall willingness to push the limits of horror, which isn't always the case with horror directorial debuts. The film's gory practical work really allows random acts of violence to shock in its unwavering dedication to evil. While the film portrays itself as a straight-up slasher, there's a bit more to it than that, and ironically, this is where it struggles to stick its landing. An underlying theme of the film is how horror fandoms are often vilified for the violent medium in which they consume. This becomes a point of contention between Todd and Kathy, as his Slasherman comic is viewed as championing its protagonist's murderous deeds. Meanwhile, Kathy is struggling to garner enthusiasm for a book that she's writing, highlighting Slasherman's victims. Slasherman's critical success gives credence to the notion that killers themselves are profiled and lauded over, while the memory of their victims is often forgotten. It's a valid point of criticism, but the conflict between Todd and Kathy over it feels constructed solely for the purpose of conflict. Todd has supposedly been writing this comic for years, and Kathy was well aware of what the book entailed, so it shouldn't come as a surprise that his book could be perceived as controversial by the public, given its real-world basis. In one particular scene, 
Todd gets interviewed by a radio host about his book, who ambushes him with questions about his work glorifying the killer. The host also reveals that one of Slasher Man's real victims was a friend of his, and the interview takes a hostile turn. The idea that Todd is shocked and surprised by having to defend a book he based on a serial killer came off as rather daft. The film also takes a heavy-handed crack at the old-fashioned view that horror's inherently violent content is detrimental to society. In one far too over-the-top scene, Todd is interrogated by the police after another murder is recreated from his comic book. The cop claims that it's very likely that Todd himself is responsible for the murders, given that he creates violent media. Furthermore, the cop claims that his comics represent his repressed extreme desires, something that Kathy also begins to champion. The commentary the film explores is presented in such an exaggerated manner that it comes off as overly forced. It clearly raises these ridiculous and unsubstantiated opinions while never knocking them down either through humor or some greater teaching lesson about the genre. And when you factor in a handful of underwhelming, melodramatic performances with a sprinkling of bland humor, the film's message gets fairly muddled within the madness of its violence. For as uneven as its underlying themes and performances mostly are, the film's premise of a creator answering for his work is entertaining and engaging enough for a seemingly simple slasher. And herein lies the crossroads of random acts of violence. If you enjoy your slasher carnage angry and messy, you'll be able to overlook its passable performances and hammy commentary. But, if you like your slashers with a bit more brain to them, you'll surely have a bone or two to pick with the film. I was truly surprised by how random acts of violence's brutality caught me off guard more than once, something I can't say about a majority of modern slashers. There is an uncomfortable energy to the violence that is consistently shocking in its sudden savageness. And despite never capitalizing on its premise and commentary as well as it could, the film's creative depravity will surely resonate with slasher diehards. And that'll do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Daily Horror Movie Review. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service and follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram and at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.